Next, we're going to talk about the rules for rational exponents. What's important to remember is that the rules for rational exponents are the same as for real numbers. By real numbers, I mean same as for whole numbers. Okay, our rules for rational exponents are the same exponent rules you learned in chapter four. So the product rule. If A is any real number and R and S are integers, so if I have two exponents with the same base, I add their exponents. So here I have two to the one half times two to the three halves. That means I have two to the one half plus three halves. That gives me two to the four halves, which is two, four divided by two squared, which is four. Now let's take a look at this question. I have two to the one half times two to the one fourth, okay? In order to add fractions, they have to have the same denominator. How do I make one half a fraction with a denominator of four? I multiply by two on the top and the bottom, right? Because two divided by two is one. And if I multiply any number by one, I always get the exact same number. So this gives me two to the two fourths plus one fourth. So I'm given two to the three fourths. We already talked about our negative exponent rule, right? If r is a positive integer, and then I take a to the negative r, I'm gonna put that as one over r. So here I have one over five to the one third. Here I have one over x to the three fourths, okay? Now, I'm not simplifying this first question any further. Why? Because five doesn't have a perfect cube root, okay? If I, for instance, had something like eight to the negative one third, that would give me one over eight to the one third, which I know is the cube root of eight, which would be two. Then I would simplify it, right? If it doesn't have a perfect root, do not simplify. Same thing goes with variables. Remember our quotient rule? Our quotient rule is that if I have any uh, exponent with the same base divided by another exponent with that same base, I subtract their exponents. So here I have five to the two thirds minus seven thirds. That gives me five to the negative five thirds. Because when I'm subtracting fractions, I subtract just their numerators and I leave the denominator the same. Uh, do I like negative exponents? No. So that gives me one over five to the five thirds. Remember our power rule? Our power rule is if I have it, a base with an exponent raised to another exponent, I multiply them together, okay? So if I had um, 3x squared cubed, I would be distributing this cube. This would leave me with 3 cubed x to the 2 times 3. So I have 3 cubed x to the 6th. Let's take a look at these examples down here. Here I have three x to the one half y to the two thirds raised to the fourth power. So that's gonna give me three to the fourth times x to the one half times four times y to the two thirds times four. I have three to the fourth. x to the one half times four is four halves, which is just two. y to the two thirds times four gives me y to the eight thirds. Let's take a look down here, okay? I can't simplify what's in these parentheses first off, even though I'm subtracting because they are not like terms, they have different exponents. 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this monomial by this binomial. So I get m to the 3 fourths. In this case, it would be plus, right? Because I'm not raised to another exponent. 3 fourths plus 5 fourths minus m to the 3 fourths minus 1 fourth, sorry, plus 1 fourth. So I have m to the 8 fourths minus m to the 4 fourths. That gives me m squared minus m to the first power. And I'm fully simplified because I cannot combine any of these like terms. So when an exponential expression is fully simplified, this is the same as it was with whole number or integer exponents, okay? Each base occurs only once. There are no parentheses, no powers are raised to other powers, and no negative or zero exponents occur. Fractions are okay. Are okay. Important for us to remember. So let's work through one difficult example. And then I think we'll be in really good shape. So here I have 4x, y to the negative 6, over x to the negative 2, y to the 1 third. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is simplify what's in these parentheses. Remembering that when I'm taking a quotient, oops, when I'm taking a quotient, I um, subtract exponents. So I have x to the fourth minus a negative two, and then y to the negative six minus one third. And all of this is to the negative two thirds. I'm left with x to the sixth, y to the negative six minus one third, that'd be negative six and one third, six times three, um, I want to make this just one uh, denominator. So if I have negative 6 and 1 third, I can rewrite that as a fraction as negative 6 times 3, so negative 18, and 1 over 3. So that's negative 19 thirds. y to the negative 19 thirds to the negative 2 thirds. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this before I turn this y into a fraction in the denominator, okay? So that gives me x to the sixth times negative two thirds, y to the negative 19 thirds times negative two thirds. So that gives me x to the negative 12 thirds y to the 19 times 2, that gives me 38. 3 times th but 3 gives me 9. Okay. That leaves me with x to the negative 4th, because 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. y to the 38 ninths. Now, do I like negative exponents? No. So I'm going to put that into the denominator. So I'm left with y and 38 ninths over x to the fourth.